My name is Mike Rashid King. We are in Orange County at Self Made Training Facility in Costa Mesa. Go dummy, go beast on them. I go beast. Go deep, I OD on them. Apply pressure, put heat on them. Put that five zero degrees on them. When I first started lifting and becoming physically active, I was a child, I was 12 years old. I was one of those kids that just was just naturally active. I always wanted to be strong. I wanted to be fast, you know, I wanted to be athletic. All of the things that comes with that, that was me. Um, I started boxing at the age of 12 as an amateur. And I also started lifting that year as well. I was doing pull-ups. I was, you know, push-ups, running, bench press. I was addicted to the bench press any young boy is, bench press and curls. So, you know, before that, I was just a little kid, you know? There wasn't necessarily a transition from weightlifting to boxing or boxing to weightlifting for me. I started doing them both at the same time. And typically that's a taboo. However, if you're lifting and you're maintaining your athleticism and you know, you, you maintain your mobility is no problem. It's actually a huge benefit because of lifting being that strong, it gives you an incredible uh, amount of explosive power and speed. You know, typically you will see big muscle bound guys learn how to box and they look awkward and the punches are not that hard because they're so tight. They never learn how to leverage their body properly, right? So, but when you've always done it, that's not the case. And it's a huge benefit, contrary to popular belief and conventional wisdom. Yeah, there were, I had a lot of motivation, more so from boxers than bodybuilders. I admired the bodybuilding physique, and, that's, and I wanted to be muscular. Really, I started just wanting to be strong, and I wasn't concerned with how I looked. But as you get older, you meet girls, you want to look cool. So that is a thing. I'm not going to deny that. You know, I want to look good, and I think I look good muscular. Um, but they didn't inspire me, per se. The fighters, the boxers inspire me because you know, when you watch someone like a George Foreman, you know, at 45, 46 years old, getting beat up every round and hanging in there until the last round and he knocks the guy out and become champion, that's character, you know? When you watch Ali in there against uh, Joe Frazier, who's relentless hook machine, right? Broken jaw and fighting through all of that, that's character, it's inspiring, you know? Uh, it's, it's, cause the fighting is so hard, the, the training is so hard, and it takes a, a special kind of weirdo to stick with it, you know? So, you know, I fought all my life as, an, as a child until a young adult, you know, as an amateur, and then I stopped. And, um, you know, over the years, it bothered me that I never turned professional. So in 2017, you know, I was helping some fighters out. I'm friends with a lot of pros, and I was getting my, applying for my manager's license and promotion promoter's license. And I'm the type of person that, you know, I have multiple reasons to do it. For one, it's hard for me to be involved in something and not being a practitioner. And for two, I, I didn't want to close a chapter of my life without ever becoming a professional boxer. I wanted that on my, my life resume. And three, my son is a boxer. And I asked him, I said, son, you want me to turn pro? His eyes lit up, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, I'm gonna do it. So that's all I needed. Yeah, uh, there are injuries involved. Um, you know, right now, I'm feeling it in my, my elbow because with boxing, like the hyperextension, you know, and for me, stopping for so long and starting back, it was still kind of foreign to my body. So um, that's irritating, but it's not the worst thing in the world. But I also, on my fight, my first, my professional debut, you know, I train in 18 to 20 ounce gloves, but I fight in 10 ounce gloves. So, and at no point on my training am I wearing small gloves. I'm wearing huge double sized gloves the entire time. So it's extra protection, you know? So the night of my fight, I actually uh, chipped off bone in my knuckle. The shot, it was a first round knockout. The one punch that knocked the guy out, that right hand, the only right hand I landed, is 50-something 50, 50 seconds. That punch chipped off bone in my knuckle. 
in my right here. So I wanted to fight the next month, but I couldn't. I had to take time off. It hurt like a bitch. Oh my God. Little, little bone just floating around in there. You know what I mean? So, but it actually helped me because it grew back weird. So it's bigger. My knuckle's bigger now. So it's not good for them. It's good for me. But um, I did that. Um, I also broke my big toe on a, on a trail run with the wrong kind of shoes on. That was, you know, disheartening. But those are the only injuries I've gotten from fighting, you know. So, yeah, they're there, but it's, it comes with the territory. And it's nothing that anybody complain or bitch about. You know, there's another reason why I, I admire fighters, man, is just guys will have major injuries in the ring and fight the whole fight with it. You know what I mean? So that's, I, I have so much respect and admiration for people like that who just dig, you know, whatever adversity. They're like, I'm not gonna quit. I'm not gonna complain. I'm gonna just do what I gotta do. And that's what fighters, that's a fighter's mentality. And I, I admire that and I love people like that. The fighter mentality is everything pertaining to my life because the physical activities we do in sports is no different than in real life. I mean, we, we are faced with adversities in life and relationships and business and you name it. So what are you gonna do, quit? No, most people will, but I don't, you know? And when I'm training and I'm doing something really hard and I'm it's like, I don't have to do this, I just do it anyway because that, that kind of stuff develops character. There's no reason for me to go turn pro, get up 5.36 in the morning, get out of my nice comfortable bed and go run in the cold. There's no reason for that. But it is a big reason for, me, for that. For me, I don't ever want to become soft, soft mentally, right? So I get out there and I do the work, you know? Um, you know, that makes me feel alive. And I know all of that kind of stuff builds character. And listen, everything, just like with weightlifting, weight training, if you don't lift, you, your muscles will atrophy. They get soft, they go away. With character, heart, whatever you want to call it. If you don't deal with it and work with it, that'll get soft too. And character, my life is good. Character is not developed when everything is copacetic. You gotta be dealing with stressful situations. So one thing I love about training is you can put yourself in stressful situations that's not like damaging your life. And the byproduct is you look better, you're in better shape but you're also strengthening your, your resolve. You know, you're becoming more resistant to stress. So I sit in the sauna, I take ice baths, cold showers, and I train my ass off because that in itself, those are different things that help build character in the byproduct because I look good and I'm in shape and I feel great. You know what I mean? So it's a cheat code, straight up. <laughs> I'm gonna give you guys some parting words. It's very, very, powerful, very profound, very heavy. You probably heard this before. It's gonna sound cliche, but it's the truth once you really, really soak it in and absorb it. I'm gonna say it and I shouldn't have to say no more. Literally, literally, life is what you make it. <laughs>